All right, so uh, to get started here, first off, in regards to having it today, Wednesday, I'm going to continue to do this just so we're clear the rest, of the, the rest of the season. I think it's good that setting the tone for the week, I don't know if you all like it or not, but I think it's good, so we'll, we'll keep it that way. That's why we're here today. Um, as far as a QB update, I'm going to hit on a few things here. We expect both Andy and Justin um, out at practice in some capacity today, um, and we'll update you their status um, based on their participation as we go from there. Um, in regards to the depth chart with, with them, uh, I'm sure that question will come. Andy's the one, Justin's the two, and, and Nick as the three. Starter will be sorted out once we have a clearer picture um, moving forward here. So we'll know more, and we'll, we'll clear that up. Um, other injury updates right now, we don't have any with uh, in regards to Goldman, Mac, uh, Andy, and, and Yip. We'll, we'll get you that after practice. Trevathan, good news, is uh, uh, he'll be back. He's going to start his three-week window to return from IR. So that's good. And then um, no update in regards to, to Borum and Jenkins. So just to kind of touch on some of the injury stuff. And obviously, I know you guys will have questions with the, uh, with the quarterback. So I wanted to hit that from the front end. So with that, I'll open up. You talked about making changes. Uh, did you decide who's going to be the play caller on Sunday? So what we've done is we've, uh, th I think probably the best part of the last 48 to 72 hours is we've had some amazing, um, healthy conversations between coaches and coaches, between coaches and players, uh, players and players, players and coaches. That's what I appreciate the most. And so without getting into specifics of what we're going to do and how we're going to do it with not just that stuff but other, other topics, I'm going to keep that internal. Um, and I think that's the best part right now for us is, is the fact that – and that's what I've found going through this is there's a few things that you learn through people is you, you learn um, having raw, honest conversations – is healthy. It's good. It 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 enables you to realize, um, you know, why things happened, and I think too it's also uh, really good from a coaching perspective to have the talks and communication, open communication um, with the players, and and so you take what they give you, and you use it, and that's really what what I'm going to do. It's what it's what we're going to do. It's what they're going to do. And week three right now, being one and two and having a, a loss that stings like that, uh, sometimes it just recalibrates you and it, and it, it makes you refocus on certain things and in, in a good way. And I think the players understand from my perspective where I come from and how real I am, how hard I am on not just them but myself, and that um, I'm about solutions, man. I am not about negativity. I am not about anything but trying to do what's best for, for the Bears at anything. You know what I mean? And so um, has, I'd be sitting here lying to you all if I said it's been easy. She, darn right it has not been easy. It's, it's been hard. But when I signed up for this job, I knew there was going to be times that I go through this kind of stuff. And now I'm getting tested to see where I'm at with this. And I know in the core of who I am, and I know in the core of who our players are, and I, I know what we're about. And when you see the people that come to, to bat for you behind the scenes, that's to me what gets you through this kind of stuff, you know? And, I, and, and so, again, like that's, that's, that's what gets you going. And that, that kind of helps you go as you have those other conversations. And you accept it and, and you move on. And that, that's what I'm about. The criticism is fair. I, I go back to, to, uh, to, to, again, last to the game. And, again, the more you're in it, the more you see it. You got to move on, but you also got to accept it. That's what I'm going to do moving forward. When you decided uh, to, to make Bill play caller last year, mm -hmm. We're straightforward about that with us. You said he's a play caller. Mm -hmm. I know you still had your hand in it, but you know there was that delineation. Why do it that way last year and not that way this year? If there is a change. Again, just all of that. Without, I, I hope you all can understand, like from our perspective, from the Chicago Bears perspective, but not not just play calling, but whether it, the starter, non-starter, this guy's hurt, that guy's hurt through the rules, like all all of that. Um, there's 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 communication that you have on the back end, but then there's also the ability for us to understand why, why we don't get into some of the answers that you're asking me right now. That said, um, whatever is best for this team is what we're going to do. And every year is probably a little bit different with how you do it. And I think, Jason, right, you brought it up a few weeks ago about some of the play calling stuff. And um, there, there's probably a lot of stuff that goes on in, in the NFL with play calling that a lot of us don't know. You know what I mean? And we think we do, myself included. 
with other coaches that we don't know. And, and that's okay, you know? So, but all that aside, it's about clear communication on why. And, and that's what we're going to do. And, and now we get an opportunity to do it against a division opponent, which we've been focusing on the last two days at home. And these, these are big now. we got to get these. And, and so when we do that, whatever it is, let's go do it. Can you explain why on the quarterback? On, as far as what this As far as it sounds like what you're saying, if I'm understanding it correctly, is that they're both going to practice and Dalton's your number one. So if Dalton's healthy, then he's your starter Sunday. So, so as far as the depth chart, that has not changed. As far as injuries, we're still working through that. And that's where, for us, you know, get to a point two for us, where we gotta, we got to know exactly where they're at and that's the that's the whole timing element of you know these next couple of days. So that's only that's only real. And now um, for us, you know, we just got to make sure that you know wh whatever, however that goes, it's the best thing for the Bears. And they're, they're, when you start getting injuries in, into it, you bring injuries into it, it makes it more difficult. Do you, do you factor into all that? I mean, the best thing for the Bears long term is Justin Fields' yeah. development. To leave him to sit with that game instead of bringing him back for another week to see if. He can Upon that. More than fair question, and I would say with that, um, like you, you go back and you see that game that that we just went through with Justin as starter, and I, I told you like um, I thought Justin did a good job in many ways, like like just keeping composed um, in in that environment. Um, there's things that I'm not going to get into in front of everybody as to why, even even as we've had more and more conversations, not just with. Uh, coaches, but players too. It's great. It's 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 good to hear some of the feedback that you get, and so I think some of that will help, regardless of who the starter is, you know. And um, so, but to say, hey, for Justin, he he had that game. Like, there's, you're, he's going to have a lot of different games in his career, and that one was a rough one, and and I put that on me. That that that's that's on me for why that went that way, and I'm gonna I got to learn from that. And we got to learn from that, but that's, we, I think we have some answers, which is good. Well, with the question at quarterback, Matt, what, how can you come up with the solutions to make sure the offense is more productive? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, the, that's where you rely on your coaching staff. That's where you rely on your players with those conversations that, that we have. Um, when you go through a, a, bad, a bad, ugly game like that, there's a lot of emotions that come into play. Um, there's a lot of opinions that come into play. And that's only fair. You have to be able to accept that. You got to be able to have tough conversations. And I feel like that's one of my strengths is to have a tough conversation individually, one on one, sometimes uh, with with a group, but also too to to be able to talk to the guys and see like, hey man, what's what's like what what's the deal? And when you do that, it there there gives you a sense of calm and understanding that you're coming up with answers. Now you still need to fix it. You still need to go out and produce the next week. And there's there is a lot of you know there there is a lot of um, uh, stuff that we need to correct. But when you have those conversations, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to be able to to trust each other. And that's the other part of this thing too is is that trust factor is you know building relationships, having healthy conversations. Um, will help you when you get to practice this week. Will help you when you get to game day, and now you got to go do it. And then when you win and you and you are productive and you put that game away, you grow from that. And you say, "Damn it! I look back, week three, that game that happened. There's a reason why that happened, and it's 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 made us better. Not just me, not just the player, but it's made us better. And it happened in week three and not 14. There's more to there, there was more to sift through following Sunday's game in Cleveland than your normal. Mm -hmm. Game and you talked about the communication and all that you've gone through since then. Yeah. Did all of that take a little bit away from being able to turn the page and get to week four and, and the Lions? No, it, it wasn't so much. The, it was the time that, that we had together um, did not take away because it was efficient. You know, it was productive. It wasn't something where you're in there for hours and hours having some conversation and trying to figure. No, it was it was to the point, um, and it was it was. Um, Again, I don't know how to – I keep saying healthy, but it was just – it was real. It was authentic. It was needed. It was needed. And if you don't do that, it doesn't matter what you're doing for Detroit, in my opinion. You, you need to get that part right. And so we did it efficiently. And um, a lot of it, too, was, you know, th there, was, there was some scripted as to what needed to be done. And sometimes it's just, hey, man, I, l l let's talk. Or, hey, all of us, let's get together. And that, that's just – I think sometimes those are the best ones. Is that possible that there'll be uh, 
personnel changes, like do something differently on the offensive line? Is that something? That Again, that would fall into the, the play call and stuff. I'm just, you know, I did what, – what I can say to answer that is that we've gotten together and talked about the whys of why everything happened and the belief that we have in these players and where they're at. I just think that we feel pretty good right now with, with that. And we understand, like, hey, listen, here's the deal. Here's how we get better, and we can help you with it. Matt, you talked about back to, to Jason's question. Do you, do you worry at all, though, about Justin having to sort of sit with that performance for a number of weeks, however many weeks, no. maybe until he gets back out there if Andy's healthy? No, because I, the, the career he's about to have and where he's going to be, I don't worry about that. He, he understands. When, when he's a part of those conversations and he hears, you know, where things are and, and all that, um, you know, I think for him – he gets to see, like, hey, uh, when you play against the defense of that nature with, with those athletic guys that are on the edge and the scheme that they have and who they are, it's a good football team. And I gave credit to them. I think they're great. I think Coach Stefanski does a great job. But Justin will learn from this. The other part of this, too, is with Andy and Nick, like the, the feedback that they're giving him along with Flip and Bill in that room, all of us together, like there, there's, there's so many little things in that game that happened that even though big picture, all the ugly stats and the bad loss, all that said, the beautiful part of all of that is that, and it's not, the, the part of all that is the fact that there's about probably four or five things in there that, that from the quarterback perspective, he can learn from. And, and there are little things um, that maybe he hasn't gone through before, even in preseason. So he's taking those and he's stacking those up and he's going to use those so that the next time he can get better. And, and so it's unfortunately to lose like that is hard. You'd rather win and go through those, but he's always growing. Not, not every team has a Clowney or a Garrett, but did that uh, did that performance did that expose some vulnerability on the line that other teams can take advantage of? That you have to make ma not major changes, but have to significantly address as opposed to just saying, "Well, it was one bad day. We'll be better the next time." Um, I, I give. I, I think that Clowney and 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 not just. Clowney and Miles, but the rest of the guys on that, that defensive line, they do a great job. And there's a reason why they are who they are across the league, how people view them on the edge, uh, along with 55 McKinley. And, um, but at the same point in time, when, you, when we have uh, Juan Castillo coaching our offensive line and Donnie Rayola and, and our, our tackles that we have with Jason Peters, the experience that he's had, um, and, and being able to, to have these guys talk through their technique and fundamentals and then have us help them. No, I, I think that for us, what we need to do is make sure that, hey, on your end, in certain plays, you can be a little bit better. But, but really, on our end, too, um, we, we can help you. And, and that's going to be what we need to do, um, not just with all the chips and the thumps and helping out with, with the edge with a running back or a tight end, but other ways, too. Do, do protection issues factor into the decision whether it's uh, Justin or Andy? No. Because you don't want to get your no. back in the future. No. Matt, Matt with, the, with the benefit of, of hindsight, when you look back to practice last week, mm -hmm. do you look back now and see if there was anything that gave you a sign that things might not have gone well? And if so, do you ch is there any change, and even, or even if not, have you, are you changing anything with how you guys run practice the next couple of days? So, um, no, I think for, for us, as we went through it, it's our, it was our first time going through the mechanics of Justin day by day and, and just going out there and, and getting all the first team reps. Because he was so used to the first two weeks of getting all the look team, and now he's getting all the first team reps and just kind of going through that dynamic. So um, I felt like, you know, for us going through those practices, he definitely got better each day. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. By Friday, we felt pretty good with, with where he was at. Um, there's some things that, again, that, that we and I have learned to going through this process that we can help him and us out with, uh, with different things. Um, but at the same time, no, I think, you know, that, that, that's what was expected in practice. Can you talk about block, blocking out the noise. Yeah. Um, you know, in real life, that can be easier said than done. Yeah. In the last three days, a lot of that noise has been directed mm -hmm. personally at you. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, have you been able to block it out? Is it, is it hard? What's your response to all of yeah. that? Yeah, so um, – <laughs> you 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 understand that it's, it's what Brad was saying. Does it take away from any of the stuff you're doing? We're so dug into the game planning and and so entrenched into what's going on that you, you don't know like all the, the the social media world or the things that are said or whatever's on TV. Um, you know you, you don't you don't you see it. But what you do is you get a text message from somebody that says, "Hey man, we got your back. This is why." You know because because of what's going on. But it also comes with the territory, right? 
and, and in the city of Chicago, where we are, and the scenario that was built up and, and where we were last week, like you, under, you understand it. And do you like it? No. But the competitor in you accepts it. And what, what my job is now is to help be the greatest leader I can possibly be for these players, right? From the moment they walk back in after that game and we lick our wounds, right, all of us, be the best leader I can be to get them ready for Detroit so that we can get back on track. If I let the other distractions take away from anything, then that's taken away from them. And I won't do that. And I got a hell of a support system around me between family and friends. And the, the amount of support that's come into me from people that are outsiders that don't need to do it is unbelievable. And that, that's like, that, that gets you going a little bit. And, and then you're out there with your players, you're with your coaches, and you see how they are, and you have these healthy conversations. And you realize, like, man, let's go. Let, let pick it back up and go. Understand everything. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's time to fight. It's time to fight. And when you fight, um, you do it together and you understand it, and, and, and then you go do everything you can to be the best for the Bears. That's it. It's, 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 you keep it real super simple. Yeah, just, I know you have a lot to, to worry about on the football field, but the Bucs are among the Bears games today. Is there a potential for the team taking another step toward moving to Arlington Heights? I'm uh, just wondering what are your thoughts about such a move, and, and when you go to new stadiums, do you take a moment to take a look, look around and kind of see what that would be like? Anything? Yeah, so... Uh, obviously, kind of to what everything we've been talking about, we, we have, you know, I'm so dug into the, that, that whatever is going on and, and everything on the outside with that, uh, um, you know, that, that would be more for, uh, for, for Ted Phillips, but that's not something that uh, I'm so entrenched in this game plan right now that that's not something where I'm at. What about when you go to a stadium like SoFi? Do you take a moment to take yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, I've been fortunate enough to be at, uh, I think, every NFL stadium. and. Cleveland was one that I that I was not at since I think 2011 with the Eagles, but um, there's a lot of cool stadiums out there. So it, it's uh, uh, that's that. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thank you.